Hey, good morning and welcome to our last Sunday in 2023. Another year has passed. Wow. And honestly, I am thrilled with how many of you have read through the whole Bible in a year. Uh, I have seen so many badges on my YouVersion stream. Uh, it is so good for God's people to be investing in God's Word. And I would love to know if you out there completed reading the Bible this year. Uh, so if you did, could you please send me an email or text or give me a call uh, to let me know that you, you, that you made it through with us, that you read through the whole Bible with us this year. And uh, I want to get an accurate count for myself. So uh, just nothing more than that. Uh, just let me know. Uh, anyways, uh, welcome to the oddest uh, Sunday on the church calendar. Now, um, I say that because normally uh, we run a series that goes through the Advent season and we conclude that series on Christmas Eve. And then we have this Sunday, a Sunday that we really don't want to start a new series. Uh, after all, New Year's is coming and that is the time it feels like that on New Year's we should start a new series. And so we have this odd Sunday that feels like an in-between. In years past, in fact, uh, before COVID stuff happened, uh, I was known to take vacation to avoid this Sunday. And that way someone else could come in and just preach this one Sunday and it was fine. But this year, this year I am glad to be here, glad to share with you today. I feel like this week, this, this last week of Bible reading really has a profoundness to what we may feel at the end of 2023, uh, even as we look ahead to 2024. And so I'm excited to share with you again from the book of Job this morning. I'm going to be in Job chapter 29. And again, we'll be in the oldest book in the scripture. And just to keep it interesting, I'm going to throw in some um, revelation. So we will have the last book, the newest book that was written and placed into the canon of scripture. So it'll be fun. Uh, so let's read Job chapter 29, and I am going to start in verse 1. Job chapter 29, starting in verse 1. And it says this, Job continued his discourse, how I long for the months gone by, for the days when God watched over me, when his lamp shone, from, shone upon my head, when his lamp shone upon my head, and by his light I walked through darkness. Oh, for the days when I was in my prime, when God's intimate friendship blessed my house, when the Almighty was still with me and my children were around me, when my path was drenched with cream and the rock poured out for me streams of olive oil. What a powerful, powerful passage that comes from the heart of Job. Uh, for those of you who have been reading along or have read Job in the past, you know what is going on here. But for those of you who may not, uh, or for those of us with horrible memories, uh, maybe you just forgot, let me tell you where we find Job this morning. Now, Job was what we would consider a man of God during this day and age, uh, in fact, chapter 1, verse 1, if you flip back to it, uh, the Bible says that in the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. And this man was blameless and upright, and he feared God and shunned evil. Uh, Job would then go and he would offer sacrifices, and he would enjoy the blessings of God in his life. 
Even God himself in chapter 1 said, uh, there is no one on earth like Job. He's blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. So Job enjoyed a closeness with God in that day. And we contrast that with our scripture reading for today, where Job cries out, how I long for the months gone by, for the days when God watched over me, when his lamp shone upon my head, and by his light I walked through darkness. Oh, for the days when I was in my prime, when God's intimate friendship blessed my house. When the Almighty was still with me and my children were around me. When my path was drenched with cream and the rock poured out for me streams of olive oil. It's a beautiful passage, a cry from Job's heart. And you can see here in this passage that Job was struggling. He was feeling a distance from God, a sense, uh, a sense of nearness to the Almighty is now but a memory. And Job was feeling it. And so hearing that, Knowing that, I, I want to ask you all a question. But this time, uh, don't send me a text or email or anything like that. Just I want you to just think about this question. I want you to ponder it. I want you to live with this question for some time this week. And here's the question. I want to ask you if there was ever a time in your life that you felt closer to God than you feel right now. I wonder how many of you would be honest and say, you know, I am a follower of Jesus. Uh, I, I've just read the entire Bible in a year. And yet even in that, you would say, I still don't think I'm as close to Jesus now as I was then. That there was a time, some time back in your past, that you look back and you say, you know what, I was, I was actually closer to God then than I am now. A time maybe when, when God seemed really near to you. And you know, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, a time when you would sit down and you would read God's word and as you would read it, you would go, man, it's like God is talking directly to me. This verse just speaks to me. And you would go to church or to Bible study or even just driving in your car and you would hear that same verse read again. And you just knew that God was orchestrating these things just for you or or you would take take some time to pray and you would dwell in those moments in prayer to God because you felt connected you would pray to him and then you would literally see him respond to you even even in simple ways and you know it's it's getting cold and and you would just whisper a prayer out as you used to drive to the store that, you know, Lord, just, it's cold. I don't want to walk forever. Just give me a close parking spot. And you would, you would then pull into the lot and the closest spot to the front doors was open. And you were like, thank you, Jesus. Right? Or, or maybe it's that song that you love so much, uh, not only do you hear it, you, you hear, it, hear it that morning in Sunday worship, but then right after worship, you get in the car, you start to drive home, and it comes on the radio again. And it's like, God, bro, right? God, you got this, right? And then, and then, 
I don't know where it happens, but some time goes by, as time goes by, and suddenly you look around and it's like God doesn't seem as close as he once did. In fact, you probably didn't even realize that the relationship was drifting until one day you were like, what happened? Where did Jesus go? And I mean, we look at Job, and for Job, everything in Job's life went from walking with the Lord to sitting in a heap of ashes dressed in burlap, like, quick, right? But for so many of us, it's a slow fade away from God. And I wonder how many of you we're closer to God at another point in your life than you are right now. Like you had this closeness, but somewhere along the line, you lost it. Let me read a passage from Psalm, from the Psalms. And this is, well, I think it's an emotional Psalm. It's Psalm 42. And I am going to read it from the New Living Translation. In the New Living Translation, I'm going to start in verse 4. And it says this, My heart is breaking. My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. When I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of celebration. And, and then look at verse 5. Look at verse 5. It says, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I mean, you can feel the struggle you understand his cries, and so many of us say, what has happened? Why was I so close to God then and not now? What happened? And what I want to do today is to help you get back what you lost. Or maybe you've never felt that closeness, and I want to help you draw close to God. And just as Job needed God to step in, we need the same. And so I want to jump all the way back to Revelation and read where God stepped in and called his people out. So I'm going to jump all the way to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. And it is here that Jesus calls to the people in Sardis. Now, Sardis was the capital city of the Lydian Empire in Asia Minor. It would be, for us, it'd be in Western Turkey. And, and Sardis was known for a lot of things. They were known for an immense trade uh, in, in various things, precious metals. They were known for wool. Uh, and they were also known for their fruit, which is kind of interesting that a city that was known for fruit but the church wasn't did you catch that the city was known for their fruit but the church wasn't and what i mean by that is in galatians paul writes about spiritual fruit Paul writes about the fruits of the Spirit that we as followers of Jesus are to be producing in our life. Spiritual fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But yet when we look at their lives in Sardis, they called themselves believers. But that's not how they lived. They had activities they had ministries they had believers that came together they looked alive 
but inside they were dead. Let's, let's read this from Revelation chapter 3. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. To the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation for being alive, but you're dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Obey it and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I come to you. I know your deeds. You have a reputation for being alive. But you're dead. You have a lot going on. You have a lot of ministries. You're a flurry of activities. But spiritually, you're really dead. And uh, listen, let me, be, let me be honest with you. We, we have a lot going on here at Nay Church of God. We have a lot going on here. We have a Bible study we have a women's Bible study. We have a men's group. We have a prayer group. We have Sunday school. We have a back-to-school bash where we give away backpacks and school supplies for free. Uh, we have our annual beast feast. We have a harvest party. We hold an Easter egg hunt. We have a church league softball team. We go on mission trips. We donate to support uh, mission fields in Kenya and Mexico, all while continuing to support our local LifeWise chapter. I mean, we have a lot going on and on top of all that we still have potlucks and festivities while we host blood drives and a girl scout troop and other organizations that come and meet in our building there is a lot going on and that's fine there's nothing wrong with a lot of activities but the question we have to ask is do we have a reputation for being alive, yet actually we're dead? So what do we do? What do we do when we realize that I don't feel as close to God as I once was? What do we do? Let me show you a couple things from this passage here in Revelation that I hope, that I pray will help you to draw closer to God as we begin a new year. A couple things. So let's look at Revelations chapter 3. Uh, the first thing is to remember. To remember. Look at verse 3. Revelation chapter 3, verse 3. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Remember. You know, you know, many of us need to remember all that God has done for us, all that God has done in our life. You know, we become so focused on our day-to-day -day lives that we fail to remember all that we have gone through. We fail to remember how God has saved us, how God has changed us, what God has saved us from, how we used to live, and God rescued us out of those dark places. Remember what God has done for you. Remember what you have received. Second thing I see in this passage is in chapter 2. I'm, chapter 3, verse 2. Verse 2 says, wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have found, for I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. I have not found your deeds complete. So finish it. Finish it, right? 
Listen, God often calls us into a purpose. Did you complete it? I mean, listen, maybe God, maybe God called you to give something and you didn't give it. Or maybe he called you to share something and you didn't share it. Maybe he called you to confess something and you didn't confess it, told you to trust him, and instead you chose to hold on and try to control it yourself. Maybe it's time for us to go back and finish it. Finish the work that God has given you. Finally, the last thing I want you to grab a hold of, if you're not feeling as close to God now as you did in the past, remember, finish it, and finally, hold on to it. Hold on to it. Revelation 3.3, remember therefore what you have received and heard Obey it and repent. Uh, That word obey it, it literally means to obey, to guard, to prevent from, from escaping, to hold it fast, to keep it. And so remember, remember where you were. Finish what God has called you to do. Repent of ignoring his call. Repent of all the things that you're continuing to do outside of what God's called you to do. Finish it and then obey. Hold on to it. Guard it. Listen, never take what God has given us for granted. Hold it fast. Hold it close. Never Take it for granted. Hold on to God. Guard it. Listen, if, if there was a time that you were closer to God than you are now, remember it. Finish what God is calling you to do, to be, and repent and finish it. And then hold fast to what God has given, it, given you. Guard it. Hold on to him. Let's pray this morning. Father God, we thank you and praise you for being a God who loves us, who calls us out of ourselves and into your glorious kingdom, into your work, your mission that you have. God, continue to call us, continue to guide us. And Father God, where we have fallen short, uh, Lord, just ask that we repent and come back to you, that we would remember you, that we would finish what you've called us to, and that we would hold on to it, that we would guard it, that we would guard our relationship from all other outside things so that you are number one in our lives. Father God, as we begin this new year, we ask that you continue to move in our lives and continue to use us so that we may be found alive in you. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, again, I hope you guys had a great 2023. And I look forward to seeing you guys again in 2024. And so until next week, God bless. Have a great week.